Hey, how's it going, world? Nice to see everyone again. Robert Torres Civil Latino, author of the uh, author of the book Autobiography: My Life Civil Latino, which was released in 2015, and I'm back at it again. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Just in case a lot of people don't know who I am, my name is Robert Torres, also known as Civil Latino. I'm a Spanish hip hop artist that released the album Observaciones de Mi Vida, Volume One, in 2013. And uh, in 2015, I ended up releasing my autobiography, My Life Civil Latino, which is here. Um, for those of you that have been following me know that I've been putting every single chapter on YouTube because I really want to get to a lot of people to really understand what's the purpose of me writing the book and why did I decide to go this route and get this book published. Um, the book consists of 12 chapters for anyone that does not know. Uh, I talk about so many different chapters here in my life. I mean, I'm sorry, so many observations. I talk about, you know, my early childhood, going to junior high school, going to high school, going to college. Um, you know, I talk about the situation when I got in trouble when I was younger, when I was, I think, 19 or 20. Uh, I ended up getting arrested, uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Things happened. Um, you know, I paid back society for my debt the way that I had to do it, did the right thing. Uh, came out of there. There's also a chapter in here called Transition Back Into Society where I talk about how was it for me after going through that experience when I was younger, getting back into society and how people look at you, how people view you, how a lot of people have good hearts and they're willing to give you a second chance. Um, so, um, I also talk about how to create a book. You know, there's a lot of people out there, especially me, that I work with families and children. Um, a lot of them like to write uh, books or poems or whatever. With this book, they're going to learn how to write a book. You can also, I talk about fatherhood when my son was first born. I also uh, talk about friendships and how you're supposed to select your friendships the right way. Um, I also talk about my album when my album was first released. And I had such a great experience on there. Uh, Jam Max Entertainment in Manhattan, New York, one of the best studios in New York City, period. Um, you know, great producers. Got to meet CEO Lee Evans, which is a great person. Uh, we still stay in contact today. And um, just a great person, great inspiration, and another good role model for me. So, um, what else? Um, it also got published worldwide, is a worldwide distribution by Book Baby. Um, and you know, here we are, um, 20 something years later from being young. And that situation that happened to me uh, and from my early childhood, almost 30 years later, 35 years later, here we are giving you my testament of what it is. Um, just to keep things into perspective, the reason I decided to write the book was because I wanted to guide so many people in the right direction. I know, um, you know, being a case plan and working with so many families, I understand the need for a role model, a positive role model for our young children nowadays, as so many of them are struggling with, that they don't know what they want to do with their life. They are confused. Uh, mommy might not be home, daddy's arrested, or daddy's incarcerated, uh, mommy's using drugs, whatever the situation from, there's always issues going on in the household, and a lot of children are suffering from this, whether they feel neglected, whether they're getting bullied at home, uh, whatever the situation may be, the point of this book is that I want everybody to really pay attention to what this is about, and I thank so many people who have supported it, I also thank so many people who send me so many emails and telling me thank you for the story, and, th and thank you for helping me change my life, and, 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 and not only them, but the parents as well. Um, being able to help their, their kids get out of gangs, being able to help the kid go back to school and get a degree, and nowadays he might be a substance abuse counselor, or nowadays he might be a paraprofessional in the school, or, or a teacher, or whatever the kids. Teachers telling me how so many students have read the book and they feel so proud of how this book has inspired them, how their kids do better in school. A lot of people have purchases also to learn the language. Okay, um, moving forward, um, I also have two more published books, Mis Grandes Canciones y Poemas, which came out in 2017, and also 125 Quotes Gathered from My Life's Observation, which is another beautiful book that deals with 125 quotes of inspiration and also five chapters of life experiences, finance, and money, and how to put your money together and, and have your own business, or, and so on and so forth. Very, 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 very good book. For 2019, I also want everybody that follows me that hasn't known or is not aware yet, I will be releasing two more books. Uh, my fourth book, uh, I wrote it um, in reference to Lehman College, my whole experience that I went there in graduate school. I also talk about my internship. I mean, it was just such a great experience there. So many great professors, so many great students, and so many great observations and memories that I have there. That to this day, I have so many great friends that graduate for there, and we have a close knit, and we have a really good relationship. Um, as far as in the fifth book is concerned, um, the reason I decided to do that book because I know uh, working in a, in, a, in, a, in a social service field, I know there's a lot of families and there's a lot of uh, uh, individuals that suffer from depression, uh, 
mental disabilities, some of them are blind, or whatever the situation may be, is a book that's gonna help you uplift your self-esteem. How I took my own experiences from my life and I dealt with them on my own, and I put them together into a document that I think that is really gonna inspire a lot of people because it teaches you the struggles and how to do interventions with whatever different struggles that you're doing that in other words is gonna help you to do a lot of beautiful things or to overcome your problems because we have to remember at the end of the day it doesn't matter your title it doesn't matter the position that you have because at the end of the day we are human and this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand a lot of people may look at a social worker or a case planner or a teacher or a police officer as heroes but at the end of the day we also have feelings and this is what people don't understand that no matter how many degrees you have whether you have a PhD you have a master's a bachelor's associates whatever you have behind that we're human beings and I really wanted to put that book out. I mean, I'm sorry. I really wanted to write that book about that. And just keep an eye on it. Um, it's going to be a really a special book. And I'm sure that book is going to inspire a lot of people. So again, thank you again for someone, so many people that supported my autobiography. Thank you for so many people that watch me and understand my purpose or what is it that I'm trying to do in this world with this um, beautiful project and also all of my other books. Um, you know, just to keep things in perspective, also, a lot of people have been asking me, yo, so Latino Robert, you're doing a lot of books. Congratulations. What's going on with the music? Are you doing anything music? Um, yeah, there will be some music coming out. I don't want to give it away, but there's a lot of good stuff that coming out. Again, the positive hip hop rapper, so Latino, that's me. I'm all about experiences and putting it into the microphone as well and just giving it to the Latino kids that they're looking for that positive hip hop dude instead of always looking for, you know, things that are not really what they are. You know what I mean? A lot of people say this and a lot of people say that. A lot of people portray this image that's something that they're not. You know, either it's to sell records or to sell music, whatever they do to each his own. I'm not here to talk about bad about no one because that's not my style. I'm on the down low. I don't really, I'm not really interested in that. My main thing is just stay focused on the kids, the youth. And use my experiences to be able to inspire them to understand that there's another world besides your neighborhood. You know what I mean? The value of education and how you can get a college degree and change your life forever. You know what I mean? And this is what this is what Civil Latino is all about. But I'm moving forward. Um, talking about chapter five. Um, you know the situation that I went through when I was younger. It's a really interesting chapter because um, you know while I was dealing with that situation, um, I started to really understand you know who my friends were. Um, by the way, chapter five is on page 171. Anybody needs that reference, um, and it, and 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 it and it's about um, while me being in that situation, um, you know, when I was incarcerated when I was younger, um, 27 years ago, whatever it was, um, you know, it kind of helped me to wake up and kind of helped me to be like, you know what, who are your friends? You know what I mean? Or do we really have friends in life? Um, and you know, I'm not here to talk bad about nobody because that's that's a close chapter. But I'm sending this message out to the youth and to the kids that, that follow me and the people that know me. And I want them to know I'm speaking to you from hands on. You got to really watch who your friends are. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people are going to tell you a lot of things like I was saying in the beginning of the video. They're going to say so many things, but you got to keep in mind when stuff hits the fan. How many in reality are going to be there for you? How many are going to be there to really understand your sacrifices or your suffering? You know, a lot of people that I thought that were my friends really turned on me. And that's just the reality of it. Everybody knows what the story is. So now, um, you know, when things move forward in life, you know, um, I've learned that I've learned to forgive people. You know, even though we don't have to have a relationship, but I forgive you. And I, and I, and I said it in one of my other books, you know what I'm saying, The Power of Forgiveness. You know what I mean? We were young, we were all young, and things happened. Um, but the question is, as far as in the book or as far as in any experience that you go through, what did you learn from that? And this is the purpose of chapter five. What did Savo Latino, what did Robert Torres learn from that experience of being incarcerated? And one of the biggest experiences that I learned was not everybody's your friend who says who's your friend. You know what I mean? Everybody knows that being in that situation is a tar terrible experience and I won't even wish that upon my, en my enemy. And I'm not gonna come here and talk bad about that place. Everybody knows what that is. I'm not here to chat and tell. I'm here to tell you a story that's very inspirational. And understand not to pick fingers of who did this what whatever situation happened I hold total responsibility for what happened because when I was young you don't understand that when you grow up and you become a responsible person and a productive member of society you understand the responsibility that comes forward with being a grown adult and this is why I'm coming back to give you all this you know what I mean um, what else can I say you know what I mean it was a long time I realized that you know I really miss my parents you know what I mean every time I saw my mother coming by I felt bad for her coming to visit me and she crying and she's telling me all these kind of situations like you know what, what are we doing here 
You know what I mean? But I just thank that she was able to put a couple of thousand dollars down, get me a good lawyer, and I didn't spend too much time in it. You know, and 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 this is why I want everybody to really read this chapter, because um, even after going through all that situation, I said to myself, you know what, I'm not gonna give up. So instead of wasting my time when I was in there, what I did was I read books, I wrote songs, I wrote poems, and I really focused on myself. I spent a lot of time in the library reading the Bible, because I really wanted to change what happened, because I knew one day I was gonna go back into society, and I wanted to make sure that no matter what I did. I didn't want to end up in that situation again, especially make my mother and my father suffer, my brother and everybody else that was in my circle, my family, my cousins, you know what I mean? Everybody suffered and especially my family in Puerto Rico. And I want to thank you guys again. You guys know who you are. I thank you so much for the letters and for everything you guys did while I was going through that situation, which is very tough. But you know what? People ask me, would you do that again? And I said to them, yeah, I will probably do it again. Because if I didn't go through that experience in my life, I won't be able to be, I won't be able to give you several Latino my life autobiography today. So sometimes we got to take 15 to 17 steps backwards for us to be able to come back and take three or four forward. You know what I mean? During that situation also, you know, it was really sad and that's just the bottom of it. But I never gave up. You know what I mean? When I got back into society, whatever my parole officer wanted, I did it. He was doing this. He wanted me to do that. He wanted my urine. Whatever it was that he did, I was on curfew. I was home by nine o'clock every day. After that came by... Um, you know, I talk about it in my book. I registered in Tuborico College where there were great professors. In 1999, I ended up finishing my bachelor's degree. Um, was a caseworker. Then after that, I was a retail manager for over 20 years. Um, and now I'm back to working with the families again, and fa family and children. I was also a foster care caseworker for t three or four years uh, back then as well. So, you know, doing a 360 and coming back. Whatever the situation is, I think God wants me to continue to work with families and children because he wants to use me as an example that no matter what you go through in life, you can inspire other people through your experiences. Um, I mean, I'm not really going to read you too much of, 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 you know what, I might not even read you the, ch the chapter of that. Anybody who's really interested and wants to really understand what that is, they can go into um, chapter 5 uh, from page 171. It's a very short chapter, 171 to 170 to 180. Eight pages, nine pages uh, uh, along. Um, but then again, um, once that situation happened, um, moving forward, I'm going to be talking about chapter six, which is on page... Uh, hold on, guys. I believe it's page 181, right? Correct. And chapter six is about page 81, which is transition back into society. You know, and how did I felt at that moment? How did I feel about the whole situation coming back? How did my family treat me? How did people uh, view me at that moment being so young in my early 20s, coming back home uh, from spending a little time, uh, I call it vacation, you know, going through that situation, being incarcerated. And um, yeah, so then how did people treat me? And that's why I get into detail about chapter six. You know, a lot of people sometimes say, and I don't want to give too much away with it because that's moving forward and I think I'm moving a little bit too fast for that, for that right now. But a lot of people ask you, you know, they want to see your resume. They want to see your job round. They want to do a background check. They want to do a lot of things. But when I get into that chapter, um, chapter six, I'm going to get really into depth of how I dealt with that situation and how I was able to do my resume, how I was able to look at life in my own opinion, in my own judgment. You know, asking for God to forgive me, asking people that I did wrong, whatever the situation was, to forgive me for what I did. So, but yeah, very interesting chapter. But to close off on chapter five, um, again, one of the things that we need to pay attention to is who are our friends. Um, you know, what are the people that we are around in our circle? What is their role in your life? You know what I mean? What is it that they're looking for for you? Is it something that you want because you're trying to benefit from the individual? Is it something that is really friendship? Or is it envy? Or you just want to do uh, damage or you really want to hurt that person instead of grabbing that person and embracing them, giving them help. And this is where this comes in again. Um, you know, understanding that in order for you to have a relationship with a friend or in order for you to understand what that person is coming from, there's a thing called validation. And I talk about it in one of my other books too. I believe it's in my fifth book. And I talk about how if you knew how much you value that person, you in reality would never do no damage or try to hurt that person because you understand what that person means to you. And this also goes into relationships. This also goes into friendships. 
And this just goes into interaction when you know someone in general. So you're wondering to yourself, well, Mr. Torres, how did things go wrong in my relationship? That's when you got to do your assessment and say to yourself, you know what, what was it that I did wrong? Because you got to remember that life is a learning experience. But the thing is, you got to learn from your mistakes. So if you know you broke up with your girl or you separated from your husband or something like that, or you did some harm or damage to someone, what can you learn from that? Because at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning of the video, it all has to do with your feelings, right? So if you know that it has to do with your feelings, we have to keep in mind that people have feelings. The same way you don't want no one to hurt your feelings, you got to understand what you're saying or how you're expressing yourself to other individuals because you could be hurting their feelings. And this was where attention comes in. This is where the breakup of relationships. A lot of people say, well, a lot of it has to do with financial. Some of it is financial. Obviously, but a lot of it has to do with your validation the way you're looking at your partner Because if you really loved and cherished that person the last thing you want to do is hurt that person and that's the truth But again, what can we learn from that experience? What can we learn from any experience that we go through in life to be able to? Understand that things do happen, but we cannot continue to let that lead that path in life Okay, so very, 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 very deep. Um, you know, for me, um, after that situation happened to me, you know what I mean? I dealt with it. I took it like a man. Constantly analyzing of how not to make that mistake again. Always going back to that moment 25, 27 years back because that's how much damage it did to me. That's why I said to myself, you know what? If I ever get back into society, it doesn't even matter about getting rich. The only concern was I wanted to make sure that I left a testament behind in my life that I will be always be remembered for. And here it is. Savo Latino, my life. Autobiography, 2015. Worldwide distribution. Remember when this book came out, a lot of tears came out of my eyes because I knew it was gonna help so many people around the world, and it actually has. I thank God every day for his blessings, for giving me the opportunity to do it, to analyze what I did. Use my observations as motivation. Use my failures as success. And always remember that life is not about me. Life is about the people that we serve. And that is the difference. Guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Again, chapter five, anybody's interested in reading it, I believe is from page, where were we? Page, I think it was 158 we said. Okay, page 171, I'm sorry. Oh, 10 pages, 171 to 180, nine pages, okay? Um, you really wanna get into, into, into detail about that situation, you can go into the book. I don't wanna give it away, I don't wanna give away the video, um, just focusing on that. My main concern is what did you learn from that? Or what do you learn from an experience when you go to, through in your life? Especially if it's a situation where you suffered a lot. And this is where I come in at. Um, before I go, I just wanna say thank you so much again for everybody that has supported my autobiography. For everyone that continues to inspire me. To all my professors when I went to Boricua College, thank you so much for your love and support. To all my professors when I went to Lehman College, finishing my master's, thank you so much for your support. To everyone in my life today that continues to inspire me and continues to understand my vision in life and what this is about moving forward. It's about helping others. It's about being a good, humble person in your community, in your society. Helping the ones in need. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't let no one tell you that you can't do anything in life. Believe in yourself. And if and if you and always remember that there's gonna be a lot of people that's gonna be give that'll give up on you, that's gonna come in your life. But the most important thing is to never give up on yourself. Thank you so much for everyone's love and support. Everyone out there, enjoy your holidays. If I don't see you, just keep in mind I got you in my prayers and in my heart, man. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Happy holidays to everybody out there. And for the new year, I hope everybody got their goals, man. It's a new year. We got to continue to work hard. We got to continue to value ourselves. We got to continue to do better. So when the next generations come, whether it's in our families or it's in our communities, wherever it is, we're giving them hope. And understanding that no matter what happens in life, it ain't easy. But we must continue to work hard. God bless. And again, thank you for everyone's love and support. Blessings.